So what we're talking about today is uh, regenerative medicine. And that's a matter of restoring body parts or anatomy or the function of some part of the anatomy, essentially trying to make it as normal or even better to the way it exactly was prior to whatever caused that tissue to be lost. And a lot of times that could be related to trauma or cancer resection. The cancer of the jawbone means you lose that jaw, maybe some of the floor of the mouth. It could be your, uh, congenital. You were born with that particular disorder. Uh, or for whatever reason, you've lost some tissue with its form and function. So regenerative medicine is restoring that using your own body's cells. It uses stem cells these days uh, and we now realize that anytime you cut yourself or you have to you scrape your skin it heals by scar tissue in part from your body's own stem cells that migrate to the wound and then close that wound so the part that's somewhat in innovative is the use of fat that we discard in liposuction or after resecting some fat for various reasons and we can actually take those, that fat and bring down all the cell components and then just take those cells that we call stem cells and create whatever tissue that we want and that can be bone, nerve, tendon, skin, other fat or any tissue along that line. It's different than embryonic stem cells and the, this is where the controversy lies. All the cells I'm talking about are adult-derived stem cells. We have them in us right now, and it helps our bodies to repair any wounds or loss of tissue. Embryonic stem cells, however, come from embryos, which means at some point that embryo will have to die in order to use those cells. And I can accomplish everything that I want to, regenerating your tissues with your own cells, and so you don't have to uh, deal with embryonic stem cells. So the, the next step is a part of a continuum. First, we started isolating the cells. Could we create uh, nerves and tendons and cartilage and bone from these stem cells? We've done that, now we're moving on. Can I create the shape of a structure that I'm trying to recreate? So one of the things we're working on are the scaffolds, the foundation of the, those cells, if you will. So we seed the cells that are destined to become cartilage or bone onto a certain scaffold, say in the shape of an ear. I want to make sure that that's going to last in perpetuity for your lifetime. I don't know if we're there just yet in, the, in that direction, so we're working on that. Perhaps even develop smart scaffolds so it starts to recruit other cells just based on the cells I put in there and what we have in that scaffold itself and it will actually draw in blood vessels, draw in other nerve structures to make a whole organ with the sensory, so the nerves as well as the muscle and the bone. So what we want to be able to do in the future is actually work so that by one cocktail we put together all these cells, all these structures start to form and now I have one unit that I can restore in your body just from some cells from some fat that started on your belly. So one of the aspects of the, the medical innovation is, is that it's, it's quite an honor to get that from a group that have voted on, on this uh, particular award. I think there's so many people in medicine that are doing great innovative work. And so it's difficult to set yourself apart from any of those. So it, it, it's quite an honor to receive an award in medical innovation. Part of the specialty that I'm in is all about innovation. We are always going to be subject to a challenge where we haven't seen that particular condition, that size of the defect, the shape of the defect that's there, and we have to figure out a way to reconstruct that, to restore that. What a great thing it's uh, going to be in the future to innovate ways to create any structure, size, shape that we want just out of a few cells, stem cells.